that unfolded just how I had anticipated. Whatever Tanasha planned to do to get vengeance on the guy who had betrayed her years ago was always obvious. And this week's betrayal was no exception. Even yet, I believe Lanak was lucky to get away with it. He had to have met a worse end than attempting to murder A.T. and killing every single person in the kingdom. I thought it was funny how Tanasha made him appear foolish and how his strategy completely backfired. The battle animation was noticeably lower quality than what we've seen in the pilot and second episodes. Lately, I've observed that it has gone from being a pretty fantastic anime to just another seasonal. It was also nice that Tanasha made sure the present prince knew how much suffering his kingdom had caused other people over the years. It clearly touched him and inspired him to do better. Oscar and Tanasha have announced their engagement. In the end, it's sweet that she doesn't seem to care. Despite the fast pace, the episode was well-crafted. These episodes are enjoyable in their own right, and I've accepted the reality that I'll need to read the ill end to have a complete understanding of the tale. Prince Rust, played by Ryohi Kimura, he brags a lot and despises magicians, yet Tanasha is much stronger than him, especially considering that his country is the one engaging in inhumane treatment of mages and their families, despite his constant complaints about mages being a burden on society, playing the role of the ultimate mage power couple, Aitai and Lanak scheme to reshape the world. However, Lanak is barely controlling his animosity towards Tanasha, and his masculine body isn't capable of containing the immense magic that Tanasha has. In her presence, he will always take a backseat. Despite Cecilia's best efforts, Oscar is making absolutely no headway in his pursuit of Tanasha, what with the war effort ground to a standstill and individuals mysteriously continuing to vanish. First, by informing Oscar that Tanasha is visiting her brother, she has served a purpose other than flaunting her enormous breast. Tanasha certainly wasn't expecting to see Oscar, but I can't say for sure why she spent her nights chatting with Prince Rust. But perhaps he reminded her of Oscar, or maybe she saw an opportunity to sway someone's opinion if he was willing to listen to her. All it takes to know her true sentiments is that she froze at his sight. Their decision to gather at Tuldar's ruins so Lanak could act out his scheme and satisfy his god complex complete with Tanasha dressed as a bride was rather convenient. Oscar had hoped she would look even better in this, but she really nailed it. Was anybody really under the impression that Tanasha was actually planning to do this? For all intents and purposes, those individuals, she disappeared from sight. She had always intended to reverse what Lanak had forced her to do and rescue all the souls imprisoned in the magical lakes before the Tildar calamity. A charming lowly redhead is one of 12 old Tildar spirits, that she calls upon to help her carry it out. Despite her seeming betrayal of her homeland, Tanasha's magic groupies continued to support her, which must have been nice for everybody except the Ponytail fan who couldn't believe it. Is she planning to return for vengeance? It's full-scale, unanimated conflict. Featuring ineffective devils of their own, fortunately, Oscar's men are adept at handling crises, and Prince Ruiz comes to terms with the fact that wizards are human just like everyone else. He also learns that he cannot murder a kid, Oscar takes down a wizard at long last. You have my gratitude for silencing Baldur. Once again, Lanak revealed his real colors. He stops taking responsibility for his acts and starts blaming Tanasha for everything the second she turns against him. He also continues to emphasize how little she ever meant to him. Nothing except petty self-centeredness and lack of shame. As Oscar eventually dispatched him, not a single one shed a tear. Oscar would never have slain Tanasha, even if Riest hadn't petitioned for peace with Kuskal since she was ready to finish it all with a death by sword. It was as simple as officially tying the knot with her. She may not like it, but she seems to be more receptive to Oscar's feelings and presence now than before, thus she stuck with her posture for now. Therefore, Tanasha enlisted the help of the jackass to set herself up for the mission of releasing the spirits of her long-dead country from the lakes. I find it hard to fathom Oscar killing her with his flashy sword, so I wonder what he would have done if she hadn't passed out. I was hoping for a surprise wedding since she was wearing a wedding dress, but I'll settle for a surprised fiancé. It seems to reason that the twelve spirits will reappear, with the redhead appearing most likely given Tanasha's recent claim to the kingdom's throne. I suppose they wouldn't dare believe Tanasha if they were mistaken. After all, it would spell disaster for them if they did. Still, it's something they might think about. Bride Tanasha is stunning. She seems like the kind of character that might be my romantic comedy best friend if she had more screen time. I also adore her magician assistant, whoever she is. Oh no! Whoa, the girl I attempted to ritually sacrifice, she's stronger than me. And now she's rebelling against me. Some of the anime's characters can be a little clumsy. Even though I suspected she would betray him, 
I had assumed he was only trying to buy time to figure out how to fight her. However, it now seems that she intended to take advantage of him by having him perform a spell that she knew only he could cast, put it to a new use. Surprisingly, they omitted showing the massacre. Why not air this horrific image at a pivotal point in the plot? The program has already included some extremely graphic sequences. I was surprised by how adorable Tildar's spirits are. Armpit aficionados have been enjoying a healthy diet as of late. Can we call her his fiance now? She says, I categorically refuse. And then seemingly out of nowhere, he does something adorable on this program. Character whereabouts might be a bit of a mystery when scenes like this and the kissing scene occur. The romantic evolution doesn't seem to be in chronological sequence. For example, that kiss scene should have occurred later. If someone had told me that the chapters were also modified, I would have believed them. However, I have heard that many chapters were eliminated. The kiss sequence made her look far more loving and accepting of her love than she does now. And I don't imply that this is typical in romantic comedies. Rather, I am referring to the fact that the kiss occurs later in the film. In many romance stories, a third person will enter and simply claim the love interest in a betrayal or interbait narrative. In my opinion, they detract from the overall quality of a series and are either completely unnecessary. Because of what essentially transpired, this one takes the cake. This somebody turns up. Without giving him a proper explanation, Tanasha abruptly disappears, posing as his romantic interest. In one episode, we learn about her history of stabbing people. And in the next, we see a standoff in which Tanasha betrays him due to his delusions and the fact that he is a real psychopath who is irrational. Personally, I went from furious to worse to better in the span of two episodes. Also, the narrator failed to accomplish anything with the setup of the supposed betrayal and Tanasha's brutalization. All that happened was the guy was slain. Simply put, I don't see any logical progression from the events of the last episode to the intended resolution in this one. I don't see how this fits into the bigger picture. And if the final two episodes could have been axed, the story would have remained the same Asgar's fiance instead of Tainashe and the audience would not have seen Tinasha cruelly stab so many times. Regarding their nation's treatment of individuals, Tinasha made a valid argument. Why is she still interacting with him? She should be able to kill him now, given that he has treated her like dirt before. Why does she continue to put up with his crap? In addition, some folklore about witches and why they are invariably women. I see the princess. It seems like a lot of things are hurried, but I'm not sure. Oh, I see. I thought the folks that vanished were all right, and was transported to the last destination. Even though we are just halfway through the season, this seems like it should be building to a conclusion. Well, isn't this a relief? For what reason did she wish to hold off until now? Ah, uh, I get it. I suppose I had to release the spirits of a few individuals. Haha, -ha, it's kind of like FMA. Curious as to the whereabouts of the other witches. It seems the haughty mage wasn't around for much longer. I hardly recognized him due to the show's speed and other factors. What a lovely soul woman. Seriously, a scumbag all the way. Should have been punished more severely than a hasty demise, in my opinion. Thankfully, the man from another country finally saw how wrong it was to be prejudiced toward magicians. Tanasha is now engaged. Haha. -ha. With so much more to come, this seems more like the series' climax or finale. Whatever Tanisha was planning, I had no idea what it was. Must have sensed it was going to be retaliation for Lanox's actions. After what he did, I fail to see how he could have ever believed Tanasha would fall for his nonsense. Is he naive or does he really act that way? Giving Tanasha the tools she needed to unleash hellfire on his punk ass ensured that he and his cronies would meet their own demise? I would have preferred it if she had killed him instead of Oscar, but it wouldn't have changed the outcome. Now that the wedding has taken place, I'm curious to see what she does as his fiance. This episode seemed very final, even though we're only in the seventh. The fact that some individuals wanted Tynesha dead and others wanted to harness her abilities was something Oscar did mention. Now that Oscar is king, I expect there to be a lot of political intrigue in the next episodes, and maybe the wedding of Oscar and Tanasha will be the series finale.